From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hi, it's Charlie Maddows, and in this episode, we sit down with Sam Bush. We Zoomed with Sam the morning of June the 30th, 2020. Sam's a part of the new John Hartford tribute album, On the Road. He's also going into the Bluegrass Hall of Fame as a member of New Grass Revival. A lot to talk about with Sam Bush. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. From WSM Radio. This is Coffee Country and Cody. And he is one happening Yankee Doodle Dandy these days as we approach the 4th of July this weekend. Uh, we will talk about his induction along with Newgrass Revival, uh, JT, JT Gray at the Station Inn, the Johnson Mountain Boys, and our own Edward Lawrence Stubbs. We'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. We will talk about his part with the title track of the new John Hartford tribute album. But we have to talk about his current emotional state. Living life without baseball. Welcome, Sam Bush, to Coffee Country and Cody. How are you? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey, coming to you live. It's a tough season. I, I'm coming out of warming up the right arm. I'm getting with. They're gonna need an expanded roster. Oh, Harry's ready. <laughs> so, first of all, where did that come from? <laughs> Chicago. <Yeah. laughs> Oh, uh, that I is got beautiful. One, uh, got for, it one day. It's actually nicely made of porcelain, so it was going to become my living on my amplifier. And the very first job, his collar got chipped, and I went, that's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you listening and not being able to see this on Circle Television, uh, Harry Carey Bobblehead mm-hmm. greeting us <laughs> uh, just over the face of our guest, Sam Bush. And, uh, Charlie, you asked off the air. That was a great question. Did you ever meet Harry Carey in, in your love for baseball? And you're a Cardinals fan, but obviously it was Carey, uh, Harry Carey and that well, big, big, bigger-than-life personality. Well, when I grew up, growing up uh, from Bowling Green, we got KMOX from St. Louis on the radio. So I did grow up hearing Harry Carey first as a Cardinal announcer. Mm. And so then I, followed, then I followed him over to the Cubs to see where he went. But I never got to meet him. Uh, but when I was a member of Emmy Lou Harris's band, the Nash Ramblers, she went to Harry's restaurant and he was there. And uh, so she got it, the autograph for me. So thanks to Emmy Lou, I have a to Sam. Holy cow, Harry. <laughs> and and Emmy Lou's a huge baseball fan too, isn't she? She is. Yeah. She's a huge baseball fan. And uh, she kind of, she sort of started being one um, when we were in the band, the Nash Ramblers. And, and uh, Maple Byrne, her esteemed guitar uh, tech and road manager for all these years, he and I love baseball together. We had a day off, and Maple arranged for us through his uh, association with Steve Goodman over the years. He knew th- he knew the great lady to get us in the old Comiskey Park. It was the last year of the old Comiskey Park, so we got in to watch a game, and I think that was Amy Lou's first professional uh, major league game. And she saw one of the weirdest games ever. Andy Hawkins was pitching for the Yankees and lost a no-hitter four to nothing. <laughs> that's a lot of walks errors and hit wow. batman right <laughs> three walk three walks and three errors in the uh bottom of the eighth and they scored three runs and never recorded a hit <laughs> four runs four yeah. but at any rate yeah, yeah so she saw one of the weirdest games ever played uh so yes yeah, she's a huge baseball fan and uh we we did it the other way we, we played in bars and went to stadiums on our days <laughs> <laughs> Sam, congratulations, along with New Grass Revival. You're in the Bluegrass Hall of Fame with J.T. Gray from the Station Inn and the Johnson Mountain Boys. When and how did you find out? Uh, well, uh, Paul Schiminger from IBMA you know, contacted us about a week before before it, it took place, you know, week before the announcement was made. So we knew it was going to happen, didn't know who the other people were. And uh, so it uh, it's really overwhelming um, that, the, that New Grass Revival – has made the Bluegrass Hall of Fame. And, um, you know, it never seemed like, uh, you know, crazy hippie music to us. It just thought that's the way we played it and felt it. And (laughs) we were encouraged from Bill Monroe on to to do what you do, you know, do do it the way you feel it. Yeah, Charlie and I were talking earlier. He's like, I didn't know you weren't already in, to be honest. (laughs) And Charlie said it had something to do with the fact that that John Cowan plugged in. Uh, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John Hartford is our next stop. You're wearing swag featuring John Hartford this morning. Off the air, you've shown us all kinds of John Hartford gear. 
uh, things related to him and your adoration for him. Catch us up on your friendship, working relationship with John Hartford and the album On the Road, and you have the title track. Well, uh, my our association with John first started when the uh, I was in the band Bluegrass Alliance that became Newgrass Revival. <clears throat> we played in Bean Blossom, Bill Monroe's uh, festival, and playing on the festival was, in fact, John Hartford and his aeroplane band, which he had gone all acoustic hit after you know many years of having being on TV with Glenn Campbell, what have you, and having a certain amount of success in that way. Well, he went acoustic and had Tut Taylor, Norman Blake, and Vassar Clements. So we met him at Bean Blossom, and it was life-changing because I, uh, one, to get to hear that quartet play was an unbelievable experience. And John was, of course, writing great songs to him. But what that band did was jam nonstop all the time. They'd get off stage and jam. So we ended up jamming with them a lot that weekend. And uh, that brought us into, you know, now. I mean, really. Uh, but I end up, at one point, I was actually, I was asked to uh, replace Tud in the aerial plane band. But it, it wasn't the right time. We had just started New Grass Revival. But uh, describe who he was as a person outside of music in the minute we have left. Well, just a a great, you know, we first knew him as a great songwriter, banjo picker, became a great fiddle player, fine guitarist, steamboat captain. He worked on towboats as a kid. So his love for the for the river growing up around Illinois and Mississippi River. Uh, So he was kind of a renaissance guy. He, Mm -hmm. he, He played, you know, but. When he would become enthused about something, he'd get obsessive about it. Like when he got enthused about beautiful handwriting and calligraphy, he, at the last 20 years of his life, he developed this incredible handwriting technique. So <laughs> uh, John was just, uh, and then when he learned to read music later in life, after always playing by ear, then he got ravenous about writing all these fiddle tunes in musical notation. So, you know, the guy was just, he, he was eat up with music. That's what it was. As is this man, Bluegrass Hall of Famer. That's Sam Bush on Coffee, Country, and Cody. He's got the title track of the John Hartford tribute. Thank you so much for coming on, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Now back to your pressure washing, okay? Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Mattos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.